Rim is coming out that Mercedes want Bottas out of Mercedes. There's rumours that the likes of George Russell could be replacing him, but that's just rumours at this point. Also rumours that Ricardo could be on his way back to Red Bull. But those ones not looking lightly at the minute. But we don't know sexy what happens over the coming races. Work on both a qualifying setup and a race setup over practice, and then swap them over after qualifying. So the race car was quite different at times to the qualifying car. Nowadays, though, you have to find a compromise that works for both. There are a few things that you can still adjust during the session, such as the differential, the brake bias, and the front wing angle. But that's about it. So it's more about optimizing what you do have and adapting your own style to suit the track conditions. Hi guys, Brown here and welcome back to another part of my F1 2019 career mode episode number 17. Today for the Japanese Grand Prix. You'll know if you watched the Russian Grand Prix that this was an episode I weren't really looking forward to. I'm absolutely shocking around Japan. It is undoubtedly my weakest track on this game. Um, so we're into qualifying. You may have seen some of the upgrades came here in Japan. As we cross the line to do our first lap. That's going to put us P4 which wasn't too bad. But as you can see as we go on to our second run. You can see that I've forgotten to turn the ERS mode up and the engine up. So we're just going on the plain engine power. And I just decided to back out the lap. I thought the game had glitched out. And then I realised what I actually did. When I watched the footage back. Um, so we qualified 17th. And it is supposed to rain for the race. The whole race. And it's going to be a very long one. So let's get into it. And a very warm welcome to the Japanese Grand Prix. An event that has decided a driver's championship 11 times over the years and has hosted some very memorable races as well. Who can forget Kimi Raikkonen's win from 17th on the grid in 2005 or Kamui Kobayashi's incredible drive to a podium in 2012. We're southwest of the city of Nagoya today at a wet and windy Suzuka circuit. 3.6 miles and 18 corners make up a lap here, with sector one likely to prove especially difficult in these conditions. We should see overtaking into turns one and 16 today, and maybe a few Kobayashi-style dives into the hairpin as well. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Let's have a chat about Williams. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Vettel, Max Verstappen and Faber, Gasly, Raikkonen, Grosjean and Sergio Perez, Butler, Norris, Lance Stroll and Ricardo, Brown, Russell, Robert Kubica and Kevin Magnussen. Holkenberg, they've taken a grid penalty and Alexander Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So the strategy then just going to be a plain um, one stop for the intermediate tyres. As you can see, it's going to be raining for the whole race, which is great. I feel like that's done that every wet race we've had this season. Did it in France and I think one other round as well. Can't quite remember which round that was, you can let me know that in the comments um but yeah it's gonna be a long race as we get into the five red lights then for the japanese grand prix and it's lights out and away we go it is mercedes versus ferrari into turn one it's mercedes versus mercedes though more likely into turn one everyone just looking to get make up ground and just get through turn one cleanly we've gone sailing around the outside of about five cars there we're side by side slouch stroll that was just pushed us off the track. I was enough alongside him. He actually turned into me there. 
but something I didn't realise when I was actually recording it, I was, I don't know what I was thinking there, but we've managed to get and keep ahead of most of the cars we ever took into turn one. We've just lost out to a Renault, oh, I do believe that's Ricardo, and of course Lance Stroll himself, and also the other McLaren of Nico Hulkenberg. So hopefully he can pull off some Kobe Ashley S moves into this hairpin. And as I say that, we're going for it down the inside of Daniel Ricciardo into the hairpin. He squeezes into the apex. He's going to have the better exit though, him being on the racing line. So we're side by side with Ricciardo. No, we're not. We've already passed Ricciardo. So we were getting the better exit than I was expecting. Ricciardo pressuring Lando Norris in the background going into Spoon. And now we head up the hill. I, I do like Japan as a track. Obviously, I don't really like it that much because I'm absolutely shocking around it. But I do like when you get deep into the race as Ricardo's having a look at us. When you get in deep into the race and you're going over the bridge while someone's going under you, you can hear the car underneath, underneath you. That is, that's cool. As we skip on then, Ricardo getting an absolute worldy exit out of the final chicane. He goes side by side of us, down the inside, we're going to hang it all the way around his outside. We're still on his outside and he's backed out of it. But you can see just the time we're losing to those ahead. The trouble that I have as we've actually caught up as I say that. To Nico Hulkenberg down the inside. We've done the switch back into the chicane. We've gone deep though. We've gone very, very deep. And I think Hulkenberg is going to be able to have another look at us here. But he might also come under pressure from Daniel Ricciardo in that Renault. And he has, you can see the side by side. Hulkenberg covering off his former teammate in that Renault. And hopefully now we can just get our head down and push after Stroll. But we've lost out again. And so if we skip on, we've lost somewhere, not quite sure where. And now we're going to go sailing right round the outside. This is Devon Butler, I do believe, who we've pushed and caught up. I think he actually pitted, in fact. So he came out the pits just in front of us. We've got the job done on him, which was good. And now we can get past Stroll. Because that is one thing that was still at the back of my mind at this point. Um, lap one turned, was it turn two? As here comes Devon Butler at us again. And he pulls to our outside, he thought about it. But he does the switch back on us. And there's contact with Devon Butler there, I think. We could both get away with it. But me just having Butler there is just not allowing me to push. And the trouble that I have as we go side by side with Devon Butler here, no sorry, with, um, I do believe that is Ikus Weber. So we've got him round the outside, that was a decent move. As we make ground on those who were pitted, we were still yet to make our stop here. As you can see here, as I was just mentioning, saying about that, into the pits we come, We're not quite sure what lap it is. So we're going to go on to another set of the intermediate tyres. And that will do us to the end of this race now. We come out the pits. There goes past the racing point of Lance Stroll. And out of the pits we come. So that's probably about, about 6 seconds. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe about 9, 10 seconds, something like that. But here comes Devon Butler again. He's on our outside. And there's contact. He's gone flying in the background there. I'm not sure what he was doing as we were on. That was the last lap. And we're on the last lap. We've round the final corner. And we, ran, um, we come up to the line. It's P11. It was... A very very boring race and thank god it's now over and we can concentrate on what I think 
is the best part of the season that Mexico, America, Brazil, Abu Dhabi final blast of the season. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, keeping their tyre temperatures up in the tricky wet conditions was really important. There's not much grip out there at the best of times and it's ten times worse if you're out there on cold tyres. So the way they kept the rubber in its proper operating window was a huge advantage today. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. So that is your Japanese Grand Prix then. Everyone finishing and actually was thinking that that was the first um, Japanese wet Japanese Grand Prix since that 2014 race when Joe Bianchi had that terrifying crash. Um, in terms of the standings, Lewis Hamilton is one point off of his six world titles you can see there 99 points there's only a hundred points left actually no there's actually a hundred and four points if you count all the fastest laps as well so he's pretty much got it in the bag for Mexico I don't think he can be stopped now unless he was to retire in the last four races let's go and talk to Claire you gained a lot of positions during the race didn't you Would you say that your rival is still on your level? The weather was miserable today, but do you feel this was an advantage for you? It was more like dodgems than Formula One today, wasn't it? Great, well that's everything. So Claire asking her stupid questions again with one our rivalry then with Kevin Magnussen so we'll be looking to it, uh, have a new rival in the next episode I'm thinking of it being Sergio Perez being as he is our closest rival in the driver's standing so it makes sense for him to be our rival um, I think there's something like 20 points in it between ourselves and the Mexican but he'll have to fans on his, on, on his side as we go to the Mexican Grand Prix next episode so have a look here we're slap bang in the middle and if you remember in the last episode I said about the um, about the regulation change that is coming to the aero I'm gonna do I think what I'm gonna do is do one more upgrade for the season and then what we'll do we'll retrieve the parts so they don't go for next season and then we'll just save up and we can go on a spending spree if we decide to stay at Toro Rosso or not but you'll have to wait and see in the, in the coming episodes but I hope you enjoyed the video today if you have hit the like button if you like this kind of content consider some subscribing if you want to see more of this um but i know it was a short episode today it was it weren't the greatest of races it was just japan me struggling just going round and round thinking this was the longest race in history basically um but yeah hopefully the mexican grand prix next time will be a bit more exciting and we can have a bit more um to commentate on in fact and you can see a bit more but until mexico goodbye